Shout out Ferris. Shout out Timothy. I think I a long time I think he's been on Rogan before. But I think he was he's like a psychedelic dude. And I think like a long time ago I saw his name on, on the podcast. But it was for like kind of psychedelic stuff. I didn't know him as the four hour Greek guy. Who's he? Look, looks like the CEO of Coinbase and also like looks like Novagratz. Just like the CEO of fucking Spotify and Coinbase. Just all those like Nordic bald guys. Just like just, just your average guy fuzz, in San Francisco. Just with fuzz, like a little bit of like orange fuzz or like gray fuzz. He doesn't look like an average San Francisco guy. I don't know. Maybe he does. I've been in San Francisco in a minute. But he looks like just people that have evolved from mountainous areas and that are ancestry. I was looking up, dude. I was looking up ancient civilization YouTube stuff. You ever go deep dive into civilization, civilization that have been lost before history has been written things down? No. Pretty interesting. There's also a guy that, um, called Graham Hancock that I knew from Joe Rogan podcast. Shout out. Um, who does study of like prehistoric remote civilizations, he calls them, I think. So, like, civilizations that got wept out. And then somehow human life or an offshoot of it still persisted and it hasn't been written down the civilization before. It's pretty interesting. Talking about how people that had a civilization got wiped out with a, with a flood or something. And that's what the, the myths of Atlantis are. And then some people survived and went into Egypt and that's, the ancient civilization of Egypt. Pretty interesting. Yeah, that flood shit's crazy. I don't know much about it. Yeah, apparently there was a big ass flood and it's like documented in hundreds of religions. Like kind of the same story but different stories. It's like, it, I, it's I was story. I was listening to all these like kind of like people talk about ancient civilizations and then all these like phrases and like names that are kind of like in your lexicon growing up. Like there's a dude named Nimrod who was like a king or something. I'm not sure. But like that name, like as a kid, you're like, because it was used as like a, like, oh, don't be a Nimrod in like 50s and 60s and stuff. And um, and then you remember that place, Titicaca? Mm-hmm. And everybody was laughing at Titicaca because it says titty and poop. But it was a pretty like, vital part to like history somehow i think there's a cool structure that people think can only be made with like super cool technology and ancient technology that people wouldn't have in according to histories giants and stuff like all these myth things that are like yeah these might just be like civilizations that lived and were cool and then got wiped out by some kind of things it's basically a lot of that a lot went down before what was it like 10,000 years we have of recorded human history and before that there's like a bunch of shit that just happened that no one knows about apparently shout out Graham Hancock I think one time I bought a Graham Hancock book <laughs> but it was like it was a it was a fiction but it was based off of like research he did and I think it's something of the gods and it was it was in Mexico and stuff um but all like like ley lines of the earth and like how certain places and structures were on a positioning of the earth because of the equator, which there's, there's like different electromagnetic uh, properties that are not on other parts of the earth. Um, so like the pyramids are like on a ley line and like Tucson and all that stuff. <laughs> and the, uh, uh, you know, what do they call the, the, the vortex over there in, in Tucson? somewhere in the desert but it's on it's on a part of the earth where there's different electromagnetic magnetic properties than other places people are just using that to maybe go through different dimensions and whatnot there's a dude in desert. you never heard of that never there's there's a place and it's uh and there's supposed to be like a cool like oh feel um if you just look up arizona vortex uh, yeah, Sedona. 
Sedona. Did I go there? I did go there. Sedona's nice. Um, but I think Sedona's also on like a ley line of the like special part, either like close to the equator or something. Um, what is a vortex? Sedona vortex, the proper grammatical for, for vortices, is rarely used are thought to be swirling centers of energy that are conducive to healing, meditation, and self-exploration. These are places where the Earth seems especially alive with energy. Many people feel inspired, recharged, or uplifted after visiting a vortex. Um, and, like, Tesla was interested in, like, Egyptian studies of ley lines and where they decided to put pyramids because there's energy in these places, and he was finna uh, harness the electromagnetic properties of the specific parts of the earth and then use it for like free electricity but i don't think jp morgan liked that and i think jp morgan went out jp morgan yeah the bank think, guy yeah i think his that myth is with something another dude i think it was uh it might have been tesla what is that font <laughs> which one sedona it's beautiful solid Probably look it up on Defont. Uh, yeah, the bank guy, J.P. Morgan. Maybe it was Ford that didn't want the Tesla doing cars and energy and stuff. Either way, if Tesla wanted to do like harness energy out of the sky and then give it out for free, nobody that wanted to profit off of enterprising was down with that. I wonder how that would work. Uh, there's patents about it. Look it up. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm sure there's a lot of people that have studied his work more than I. But I'm probably like a solid, like at least 20, 10 percent. I don't know. Maybe 30. Hmm. I'm sure there's a big ass book on him somewhere. I'll probably grab one. It's like super in depth about like what he was <laughs> like, and how he died in poverty and how like his fucking liver killed him and like it bothered him well, his he, entire life. He and loved that crazy. alcohol, dude. He was like, yeah, dude. This alcohol is why I'm I'm such a good mind. He was like, "Yo, I'm about this alky." Probably not much to do back then to numb your pain. No, he it wasn't on that. He was on it like a he was on it like a. I don't know. He he didn't like something else. Maybe he didn't like cigarettes or some other like uh, intoxicant type thing. He wasn't about, but alcohol. He was like, "Yeah, this is this is literally giving me my life." Damn, that sounds dangerous. Do you want to talk? He's dead. He also loved the number 369, I believe. What a pussy. Well, yeah, he, he was in love with uh, the Egyptians in, in their use of pyramid placement. And apparently, according to this documentary, that it's also, you, you know that uh, that company Gaia, G-A-I-A, that you see on like YouTube commercials, and they're like, oh, science, but also consciousness. Yes. And it's kind of weird. If you look it up, you probably remember. I think it was from them. So that always has like a little bit of a stigma for me a little bit. But it's, I mean, pretty interesting stuff still. The, they're saying the measurements of the pyramid are on scale with the measurements of Earth, like down to like a half a degree. It's pretty hard to do accidentally. It's fucking Egyptians, man. Wasn't they, weren't they around for a while? Wasn't, wasn't their civilization like older than America or something? I mean, everything's older than America. And, no, in terms of like time, like America's like 200 and something years old and the Egyptians were around for like... I'm pretty sure like most things are older than America. You think? You don't think there's a couple countries that lasted three years and then just died for the Civil War or famine? I think there's more of those than successful nations. There could be. I think, I mean, Russia died. The, the, the uh, USSR. I don't know how long that was for. Um, but I mean, I think, I mean, relatively America time is pretty young. I think, I mean, China and like Chinese cultures have been just killing it over the centuries and centuries. Um, let's see how long did Egyptian sniff 3100 BCE with the <clears throat> first King Narmer and ended with Cleopatra in 30 BCE. So it's over 3000 years. Yeah, P long. I wonder what Cleopatra's deal was. I feel like she's 
kind of like the least interesting parts of Egyptian culture. You think so? <laughs> Apparently, she, uh, she fucking, I think she that's, fucking that's Alexander more... the Great and that toppled yeah. his kingdom because he was such a simp, a Samuel simpleton. But I'm saying, I think that's that's more recent than ancient. I think, off of my 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 little knowledge, but I don't know. I like the technology a little bit more. It's interesting. Um, it's probably really hot back then. It's probably. I don't know. Maybe it was in a hot cycle. In Egypt. Oh, well, I'm saying, relatively to now. Probably, it's probably relatively different than what it is now. I mean, watch this. Dude. Cats everywhere. Was it, was, it, was, it, was it a cat a thing? Yeah. Egyptians were big on cats. They worshipped them like gods. I mean, they did have gods. Whole lot of gods, dude. This shit. Whole lot of gods. They built that joint on a ley line, which is also... Lining up with other people's pyramids on other ley lines, countries and continents away. Or not continents, but countries away. Kind of with Mexico, too. But there is, like, one, one thing over in uh, in this area. The, 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 uh, the Iraq area apparently was popping off with old civilizations that had cool tech and, like, insights. Just, like, popping off. Mesopotamia and all that. Mesopotamia. P freaking interesting, man. We went to a lot of stuff. P freaking interesting. Fuck, these cats are looking weird. Where? Just look up Egyptian cats. They're all. They're all weird. Sphinx <sighs> has water lines, and Homie is like, yeah, there's no way that this doesn't go back further. It for sure goes back further. What was the civilization where their pipes killed them because they got uh, lead poisoning? Probably some aqueduct people. It was either the oh, fucking the Egyptians or the fucking Romans or something. They were using lead pipes and then one of the civilizations used copper pipes and it was fine. I think Greeks, Greeks had a lot of aqueducts and, and water things. So. I used Brave for a little bit of a little basic attention token from time to time. Excuse me, I'm gonna mute real quick to do a loogie, read read a headline or something. Uh, uh, I actually can't. Uh, I want a free book. Look at my booty that you gave me out. J. Cole Sus version. Uh, grab it right now on iTunes. It's probably the. Song of the Summer for show. The ancient Romans are known for their vast empire, their politics, and their public works, but parts of their aqueduct were so bad. Pipe systems. I think they're the first one. Of the, I can't. Knowing. <laughs> doing. Oh, maybe do. I, I have to believe that they're not the first people to use some kind of infrastructure for carrying stuff like that. That's what I'm saying, because all this, all this like history that most people know. I, th I think there's a lot more history. <laughs> like you think of like Greeks and Romans and then like Egyptian with like Cleopatra and, and the Sphinx. And that's kind of it, dude. Yeah. Not, like, not like the school system's probably down with teaching like, yeah, dude, there might have been giants back in the day. Well, but, you gotta assume that the person writing about Egypt probably is dedicating most of their life to studying Egypt. Like, you know, <laughs> not like me, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna write an Egypt blog, you know? A specific, like, couple, like, fraction of the era as well. Yeah, like, fucking. I am a, uh, I am a fucking scientist on Cleopatra's laws and government, and that's specifically from this year to this year. <laughs> if you go back a couple more years, it's just a whole other area. You don't want to get it. That's a whole other yeah. like, whole class, a whole other three years of school I wasn't going to do. <laughs> yeah, jeez. Um. I've been to Egypt 14 times. I lived there for five years one time. It's and crazy. I know like 0.5% of what people should know. I get in my fucking knees and I study the dirt with a microscope and I fucking bottle it up and take it home to my lab and 
fucking Canada. And I don't know, fucking, uh, on the weekends, I use their psychedelics to really know what's going on. And then I contrapolate that with my findings of mathematics. People go crazy when they're passionate about something. Like, yeah, there was another cool quote that I think I put on Instagram that was like, I love being, dude, Instagram giving me an algorithm of, of people highlighting parts of books is great. Uh, I like that part. Um, it was like something along the lines of people using, finding a problem that is good enough to like fix, you know, or like finding a problem that's cool enough in their life to, to dedicate solving. Shout yeah. out to the engineerial portion of humans. Man, they were talking about offset, offsets of like different sapiens that were... Did sapiens ever talk about ancient civilizations in that book? Yeah. <laughs> did it? What did they say? Honestly, so much, but I read really? it like over a year ago. Well, like ancient ancient or like kind of like relative ancient? Ancient ancient. Like it talked about when we split up and when there were certain sects of humans living on parts of Africa, but they weren't like human Before beings. That. They were like human something else. Oh, okay, cool. cool. Yeah. They're also talking about uh, possible origins from like Serbia as, a, as an offset from Africa as well. But they all happen to be white people. So I was like, hey, what's going on here? You know, maybe they're trying to get their little European vibes into the origins of humanity but it could be true before you ever think you're in like a plane and you're just like bro this technology is brand fucking new dude in the well, scope of history even technology are planes even like a hundred years old uh probably by now got a little right like, brothers i'm just like what the fucking shit i'm in a goddamn i'm 30 billion miles in the sky going 100 trillion miles an hour like, how am I just not freaking the fuck out right now? How is anybody alive? You know, we're fucking apes. We 1900. 1900. That's fucking brand new. We're still beta testing this shit. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking that, like, if, if there's hella ancient societies that have, like, really good. Because they're also talking about, I think, kind of from what I kind of got from that. There was a lot of civilizations that were super into math. Like, you had, like, Muslim places and like in those places around africa that were super like astronomy like star built civilizations and like into like how that lines up with cycles on earth and then as people were coming in and conquering things like like spaniards were coming into like these like uh islamic places it was less of a cultural thing to do like study of of space cycles and more um kind of they were talking about religion specifically but it was it was more kind of like less reliance on non like super local things and i think an offset of that kind of split culture and in, in the timeline a little bit so i was thinking if like these ancient civilizations had super good understanding of like math and cycles and then it was offset and to like kind of this timeline where you have really cool like microchips and like weird computer stuff i was thinking like what kind of sect of technology can you do with like primal stuff and really good math that that would be completely different and just like a different infrastructure in, in the its totality than like computers and stuff and planes and stuff I was looking at the moon, bro. And I was looking at the moon, bro. And I was thinking about airplanes and stuff. And I was like, yo. Yeah. All these billionaires are like, really, like, they're going to, like, bat it, bat it, dude. They're like, we're trying to planet this stuff, dude. Shout out. Look up asteroid mining. Um, but it's interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. Because at the same time, I feel like this tech could also, like, be primal you know what i mean oh it's incredibly primal but just like in like 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 computer like computers are amazing bro like this is really cool <laughs> like i'm getting information from a non-local place on earth people are writing there's a lot of backup of it but i, f I feel like it's 
like your brain, were, like it was what? If your brain processed information, the speed of your internet, you would die. Yeah, that's the thing too. It's so slow. The, there's a also some Sam. You know Sam Harris. Rings a bell. Um, a neurology guy that has some like meditation stuff from like a brain science perspective. But he's talking about how uh, hum, it's humans now don't really perceive reality how it is. It's just perceiving reality as uh, a survival mechanism. So there's a lot that's just blanked out. Um, yeah, is a thing. Ah, that's, that's, the only, that's the only reality that matters though right because it's the one we experience that, that cares I think... what a cat sees I think there's something to be said for the interestingness of non-human survival reality though of reality as it might be but yes I, I do think especially he might agree with that saying that nothing else might not matter because that's the uh that's the existence that you live in. I'm not even saying I don't care. I mean, but like, is it like what? What are what do cats see? You know, is there different things that are in a in a interesting that in a cat's consciousness awareness in that were to yeah. take time to consider things like that? You have to reach a certain level of comfort and survivability. Or like, if I was sitting in a field and I was always wondering about if I'm going to be eaten by a lion. I don't think I'd ever give a shit about what cats see. But now that I have all this free time and I don't have to worry about that, I can wonder that all day long. Yeah. Pretty interesting, huh? That set of videos was talking about the evolution of shoots off of different sapiens or whatever old humanoid things there were um, in the evolution of consciousness in the brain. Interesting. I think that's where a lot of the old tech comes from. Uh, space stuff. Uh, anyways, dude, f Twitter's going to accept Bitcoin. I mean, come on. Ah, oh, shit. Is it going to take a day to transfer? <laughs> it's actually pretty fast. The Lightning Network, man. Uh, let me find it. I also found this. I'll talk about that later. But just like weird decentralized publishing. This is a really... Uh, it's like a random project, bro. But like, okay, whatever. Uh... Twitter Bitcoin tip. That's also why I was interested in building up a, a Twitter following. Let me get some CNBC bullet points. Because The Verge just wants to like do good writing. Let me just, just spurt it out for me, you know? Yeah. 